Hey folks, uh, RPG a day, day number 26. Which RPG provides the most, should I just write this too? Useful, there we go, most useful resources. Now, as in a lot of my videos, I have not played a lot of games, but uh, for this particular question, I really have to go with Dungeons and Dragons, third edition, three point five, and there's a reason for this. Um, the current game that that us old folks <laughs> together trying to play um, has been fifth edition. Um, we went with fifth edition for a couple reasons. One, uh, there's like th three of us that had played before and haven't played for a while, and and I honestly was trying to get you know, something together. I had heard somebody else played, and I, I knew one guy, Will, who you know, played all kinds of games. And he said that he was interested in checking out Dungeons and & Dragons. Um, and then through the grapevine, I heard about another guy who played. So we got together, and then that just kind of spread, and we got like six players real quick, five or six. You know, half of us had played for years and wanted to get back get playing again, and the other half had never played before. And so since 5th edition, you know, come out, I guess, recently, because honestly, I haven't been tracking that kind of stuff. Um, so I have no idea when it actually came out. They, uh, that's what we went with. And we had the, the Fandelv and the starter edition and the free starter rules. And, and we went through that. And you know, for me, it was okay. Um, I had some, I played the, the uh, fighter guy the bowman and i had some issues with you know a lot of people talk about the fighter being weak in fifth edition and at the lower levels i really saw that even even after getting to the third level you know there's a couple things you get the 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 breath where you get your you know, hit points back and um you can get a uh, push and get one extra uh, set of attacks kind of thing or action a second action <laughs> and then you know when you third level there are a handful of things i think i went with the champion so i could crit on 19 or 20 because yeah you know, i am a role player r-o-l-l -L player um I, I try to understand the mechanics i try and i i'm not a min maxer necessarily but don't believe in and maxing out the situation um and the more times you can roll dice the more opportunities you have to make a critical and a critical is where things happen right and if you double your percentage from five to ten percent on chance to crit that's just that much better so i haven't played a lot of different characters in in fifth edition and that's my first guy and uh, we brought in a couple of other people into our group <clears throat> and um, they had uh, the player's handbook. They had, you know, everything. They had the full set of rules. And one of them, I think, had a, I think it was a bard. At that point, we, they'd come in. We were all you know, between third and fifth level. And so we got these player or character classes that mix combat and magic. And they completely outclass anybody who's only got combat. And I saw that. It was blatant to me that I could not compete with, with, with these, these other classes. And that really bothered me. Um, you know, it's possible that a fire once it gets fire and you always make it in the you know, triple attacks and you can do, you know, the extra dice thing and all that kind of stuff. You know, maybe there's a balance out there somewhere. But from our table, where I saw, I go that there is no way I'm ever going to play a straight fighter again. There's just no way. And uh, I personally like heroes. And I believe PCs should be heroes. And um, and I, I like paladins. I like that concept that appeals to me. I've got, I guess, that kind of mindset. The warrior 
uh, clerk's the right word, warrior priest kind of thing. You know, I'm, I'm pretty religious myself. I've been in the Marine Corps. I kind of pictured myself as a paladin. Well, anyway, so we started a new campaign after we finished up with Van Delver and or Van Delver, however it's pronounced. And um, we did uh, Out of the Abyss. That's what we started with, with Out of the Abyss. You know, you start off, you know, prisoners um, in the Underdark. And I took the half orc paladin. Um, again, if he gets a crit, that's an extra die. So, you know, that kind of stuff just you know, appeals to me. Uh, so, that's what we had. We broke out. We had a bunch of adventures in the Underdark Convention come out. And we had transitioned at that point to, um, I want to say, I guess, the giant. That's right. <laughs> Storm, King's Th Storm King's Thunder. And uh, as we were running through that, we got to a uh, uh, a point. And, and here's another, another story about uh, not Maxi, but uh, but maximizing your character's abilities and comparing them with other characters' abilities. Uh, my son is also in this group, and uh, at one point, our characters. We're traveling somewhere. We've gotten separated from the rest of the party. And we come up against a frost giant. And uh, my paladin, because honestly, I have no idea how 5th edition giants work. I know how I think giants should work. If you've got a guy who's 15 feet tall, who has an actual weapon, he's going to kill you in one hit. Um, and I know they do a lot of damage, just had no idea how much, because again, you know, I'm brand new to this, I had a player's habit, that was it. So anyway, we're fighting this frost giant, and I tell you, I am freaked out, because I know he's going to hit me, I'm going to die. But, uh, we've got to get whoever's in the wagon down, uh, so, you know, the frost giant attacks, and, or the, I think there's more than one, I think it might have been two, or frost giant and some minions, or something like that. Well, anyway. The other player is taking care of all these guys, and I attack the, the frost giant. And um, like fifth level at this point, maybe sixth, I'm not sure. Uh, but he's a vengeance paladin, right? So, anyway, he uh proceeds to uh pump all of his um spell slots into device might with every hit he makes, and um. Almost, almost takes him out. Takes this frost giant out by himself. Um, on the, the very last turn of, well, not the very last turn, of the, well, the last turn of the combat, but towards the end of the combat, this other giant comes up and helps us out. He's killing some of the guys, and he, he does the final blow on the frost giant. But uh, my son, who saw all this going by, going, is thinking, you know, this is broken. You know, this paladin can't do this much damage. That's just not fair, you know, that kind of thing. And, I'm thinking, yeah, but I'm spending all my spell spots on slots. I can't do any of these other things that Paladin's supposed to be able to do with their magic. <laughs> but uh, that's just a little bit about me. Anyway, getting back to the original story about third edition and 3.5 and their um, supplements and additional information. Um, uh, this this Hepper Paladin of mine uh, got a call. We, we had started getting an army together. We had this this gnome who was the, the psychic guy, the mystic, because our our GM let us practice with you know the different you know uh, other stuff that Wizards comes out with, you know. And so he gets the and the, the player is very um, animated and uh, has a forceful personality, and I'm more of a laid back kind of guy, so. Something's happened because my player, my player, my my character has a hatred of orc. I, I I do not agree with this whole orc tribe, man tribe, let's mix and have friendly relations kind of thing. So my half orc uh, came out as a result of an orc raid on a village, and my mother left me at the uh, doorstep of a monastery, and so the monks raised me, and that's why he's a paladin. That kind of thing. It's part of the backstory deal. I don't know where I was going with that. Well, anyway, oh, the the mystic, and 
in the Underdark, one of the other players had, it was originally an orc that was part of the story for the Underdark, but we made him a half-orc, and he was a, uh, a war cleric. So I got this war cleric, I got this mystic, and they're trying to manipulate all these people around to um, a party of orcs, excuse me. And we're all talking, this is what we need to do. We need to make the, the paladin, this hero of orcs, and gather these orc armies together so we can fight the giants with them. And, you know, I understand that, but again, I, you know, I'm not a fan of orcs. I don't like orcs. That's, that's one of my things is I hate orcs. But, you know, between them and the whole situation, you know, I can understand, yeah, it would be very helpful to have an army of orcs and fighting giants. Okay, I'll go along with this. And the mystic did some of his things, and and we did some one-on-one -on -one combats, taking out the leader guy, and you know, two hits kind of thing. And so we start gathering these armies of orcs. And uh, there's this tower along the road somewhere that somebody had 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 found, and said, "Hey, sir, we let's build a barracks here to start doing our thing. We can even build a temple to Grumish, and you know, this kind of stuff." And like, okay, let's build a barracks first. We need places for people to stay. So we've got we've got this tower. Um, and these gathering armies as, as words of this half orc paladin are spreading throughout the land. Uh, a little bit much for me, but it was cool. And um, so all this stuff is going on. Uh, I was not able to make it to one of the games. And so the GM said that I got word from the tower that something was going on. Orcs were missing. So I take off to go to my tower. They have their adventure. They do something. And uh, then the next time I am able to play, but our character is separated. So he has me roll up a new, a new character. And uh, my son's character, oh, they found a deck of many things. And he ended up getting his soul taken in a trap somewhere. So this character died. And he was really upset about that. But anyway, he made a new character too. So he's, you know, playing with all these different kinds of things. And he likes all the new stuff, new stuff, new stuff anyway. So he builds himself a tinker. Mm, not a tinker, a... Uh, Animus isn't right either. Alchemist. He does the Alchemist uh, class, a new new character class for Alchemist. And so he, I think it was actually a gnome they did too. I don't remember what his race was. But he, he makes this character. And um, uh, since we're running at fifth level, I, I can play with some level stuff here. And so I made a uh, female dro, and I will say dro because it comes from the Celtic word for demon. Which we also have the word troll from it has a long O sound. I don't care what wizard says. Okay, so and drow. These are just like chalkboard nails, you know? Ugh, I hate that word. Anyway, so my drow, female uh, drow. In fact, she doesn't like that word because her family left the Underdark. She worships Illustray, I think it is. Uh, the goddess of, of dance and, and music and swordplay and all that kind of stuff. The good drow demon. Or demon, a <laughs> deity. And so her family, you know, a couple generations back, left the Underdark. They're deep in some dark forest. They've got a couple of caves. They, you know, they still live underground kind of stuff, but in the deep dark of the forest. So you know, they have to worry too much about the whole, you're at disadvantage in the light. And then she's got a veil she wears to help combat the light, that kind of thing. Anyway, a hood and a veil and that kind of thing. But anyway, so... I, I write her up as a third level paladin, um, Oath of the Ancients. And as she was building up to her third level paladin and she's doing little adventures and stuff, she's got this earning for the, the Feywild. She wants, you know, to find, I guess, the Eladrin, you know, real elves, that kind of thing. And so she's looking for Feywild crossover points. And eventually she finds one and she comes in contact with the. Um, the uh, fairies of the Dark Court, I forgot what they're called. But so she becomes a warlock of uh, the Queen of Air and Darkness. So I've got this third level paladin, second level warlock that's tied to this whole elvish kind of stuff, you know, the ancient forest and the, the Dark Court of the Fae and that kind of thing. And <coughs> excuse me. 
So I, I start looking, okay, now, I know the book, the player's handbook has got some stuff on the draw. And in the Monster Manual, by, by this point, I think I've got a copy of the Monster Manual, the DM's Guide. It's got, you know, some stuff on the draw, but this whole illustrate stuff, you know, I found that's online, you know, I don't know, d, d Wiki or whatever it was. And so there's some stuff in, you know, this stuff made sense to me. And so I was trying to, you know, pull it into play and um, I started looking around and in third edition of 3.5, they've got tons of extra material written. I found like three, three different books written on the Underdark. Of course, one of them was probably fourth edition. And I know that Wizards kind of changes everything when they went from edition to edition, which is something I didn't know beforehand either. So some of it may not, you know, mesh so well, but just being able to, you know, read through and find this kind of information and know that, you know, Illustrate does this and Dark Elves, so that's what she calls herself a Dark Elf, she does. In fact, we had a draw in the party from the Underdark and and he had mentioned something to him. I am a draw, I am a Dark Elf, you know, that kind of thing. Anyway. So that's how I came across all this information that uh, 3 and 3.5 have. And I, I have to admit, I was amazed. And I'll submit that if I would have come across this stuff when I was younger, I would have gotten pissed. Because one thing that me and at least one other player I played with absolutely hated was you buy a system, right, to play, but then you got to buy this other supplement and this other supplement and this other supplement. And yes, I know, game stores have to produce stuff in order to make money to be in business. Got it. You know, I don't fault them for that at all. It was just, you know, like a pet peeve kind of thing. But anyway, I found all this stuff and one. Wow. Um, so I had to pick some of it up. Because I like the whole concept. All the way back to, you know, AD and D in the village of Homley. And uh the um Temple of Elemental Evil. And yes, I do have the draw in there, even though the guy who rewrote it or or completed it because Gary hadn't uh, or Gary had stopped and done it again, but he had cut um, the Queen of the Drill, what's her name? Okay, we have all these blanks. Anyway, I wrote her out and with these other guys in. And I still keep that piece in there. There's I got I I believe in that three way that tr we call it a love triangle, <laughs> a power triangle. You know I I I still you know support that. In the concepts in my head uh, for my world, I, I, I like that. That was like the first uh, campaign concept that I came across. And I just bit off on it, and I've been drinking that Kool Aid ever since. So I managed to get. So I got, you know, PDFs of these things. They're available everywhere. And I'm reading through them. And I'm going, oh, this is great information. And just to realize that three and three point five have got so much information out there. So that's the game, the RPG that I think has got the most useful um, supplements. Dungeons and Dragons 3.3.5. Um, even when you come across the stuff that conflicts, you're the DM. Make your decision. Well, guys, have fun. Keep rolling.